Hi, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. I have Dylan here because he has decided that um, he won't be locked out of the library today like he was previously because that is unacceptable. Unacceptable. So um, if you hear some tearing noises, it's this guy and he is tearing a box. So I've just let you know now, could you resist that face? No. No. Okay. See, box. Instant corgi toy. There we go. So, this is a casual YouTube channel. Yeah, let's just wait to the initial. So yeah, that's Dylan. Okay, so today I'm going to be doing the first half of my June wrap-up. This is going to be fun, isn't it? It's going to be so much We made a trade. He can play with the box outside the door, and I can record. So you might hear a corgi thumping up against the door, but this is the best we're gonna get right now. So let's just go before it gets too awful. I can't stand to hear him cry, and I'm leaving him for vacation soon, so yeah. So today we're gonna talk about the first half of my June wrap-up. And this does not include poetry collections. I'm planning on filming uh, a couple videos about this poetry reading project I'm doing for the summer when I get back. So just know that there are a bunch of poetry collections, I think five, that I've read so far in June that I'm not including. Anyway, all right, let's get started with the books. First up is Sweet Spot by Amy Ettinger. This is about a journalist ice cream binge across America. She goes to a bunch of different, uh, like, artisan ice cream places. She studies the ice cream industry as a business, also where they get their products, uh, different types of ice cream, sort of like custard and gelato, uh, ice cream, like novelty treats, like the anything basically on a stick, uh, ice cream trucks, rivalries, basically anything you wanted to know about ice cream is in this book. I'm not going to say a lot about this book because we're interviewing her when I'm recording this, this Thursday. Um, we're interviewing Amy and I really want you to go and hear her because I think the best person to convince you to read a book is the author. So yeah, I really enjoyed um, having an in-depth look at ice cream and the ice cream industry and, you know, things I never knew. Like, why ice cream parlors were also often drugstores. Like, you know, you go into It's a Wonderful Life and the druggist is also has that soda fountain and you're like, what is that? Anyway, it is all explained in this book. So yeah, take a look at that one if you want to find out about ice cream. Before we head into Fantasyland, we're going to stop at Autumn by Ali Smith. This is the UK edition that my friend from Scotland sent me. So I also realize now that I have to get the other three in this series <laughs> in, in, uh, in the UK edition, because they have to match, of course. Uh, but this came out in the UK last fall, and it came out in the US, I believe, in January. Maybe early February. And this is the first in a series of four. This is about just so many different things. Um, Ali Smith wrote this, including Brexit. Like, it's that up-to-date. And so this is like, it's not a stream of consciousness novel. But re I listened to the audiobook, and when read out loud, the prose is gorgeous. I've never read Ali Smith before. She's been on my list, like, forever. Um, like, pretty much, I don't even remember. It's for a very long time. And uh, my friend who sent this uh, had read How to Be Both, and when she heard that I really wanted um, the UK edition of this, uh, she was like, oh yeah. <laughs> so I read it, and it is really beautiful. It's about a relationship between a woman and her elderly neighbor and you really don't get to see a lot of books about older people for whatever reason and so it was just really cute and well cute and meaningful to see the relationship between a girl and this her like man I think it's like 85 or something when they first meet and so they really talk about like his past and then it also deals with a lot of current events I don't really know how to describe this. It's just like, um, it's just, just 
this beautiful book about this relationship and about current events and just a lot of commentary on that and uh, yeah so I would highly recommend this book because it is beautiful and I cannot wait to read the rest of the series and basically now anything by Ellie Smith. I think I'll go How to Be Both um, because I have the audiobook somewhere on my computer so I should probably listen to it at this point, right? Now we're heading into fantasy land. Um, what do I mean by that? That could mean a lot of things, but we're actually reading uh, fictional universes for reading women. So I read a lot of fantasy books and we don't put them on our Goodreads anymore to kind of keep it as a surprise. But since you subscribe to this channel, you get an inside look. So let's get started. Okay, so you remember that I uh, read The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers in my last, I think I talked about in my last wrap up. Now, I've been thinking about this more because I was trying to decide if I wanted to read the second one before we, we recorded. Um, I planned on talking about this book, but it was very episodic and then there were like these little morality lessons at the end of each episode and it was supposed to be a novel and I always forgot like, why are they on the ship again? Where are they going? Yeah, I don't know. It was just wasn't what I was hoping it to would be, but I really love the characters. It's just a warm and neat, like, a lot of feel-good book. There is a lot of diversity in it, um, but it just wasn't as cohesive as I would like it, um, and it was a bit preachy, and for all its diversity, it didn't have much rel religious diversity. Really, the only, like, portrayal of religion that we get is a guy who has to, like, be cured of his religion or he's going to die. Anyway... I don't want to like spoil that for you, but uh, yeah, so I had a lot of questions about this book, but I was like, you know what, this is our first book. I have the second book, I might as well read it and, you know, see if there was anything else, you know, that she wanted to finish or thematically or I don't know, give her another chance. And I'm so glad I did. Oh my goodness. Okay, so The Close and Common Orbit I think is way better than A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. While I enjoyed the long way to a small angry planet I just had to keep ignoring certain like ticks about it and but I love the character so obviously I wanted to keep reading this one takes everything annoying that I found out this is a cohesive novel it just flips between two different characters perspectives I don't want to give too much detail because it's a huge spoiler what character is in this one of the primary characters in this book so I'm not Going to say who it is. This care, but the character renames herself Sidra, so we're just gonna go with that. So Sidra um, is new to, uh, I guess, this particular planet. She leaves where she was before, and she uh, stays with Pepper. And Pepper is a minor character in the first uh, book. Uh, she is a tech, and so we learn more about Pepper's past and where she came from um, on this planet that would like genetically engineer. Uh, human beings for different things and so we learn her past but we also learn Sidra's present and coming to terms with her as she is. Um, it is not episodic. It is beautiful and cohesive and it's still amazingly diverse and it teaches you and it shows you rather than having those morality lessons or and it takes the preachiness out of it and so I just love this novel so much. I loved it so much more than the first one. I know that might sound horrible and I feel like I'm in a minority here but um, I do want to say like I did enjoy this but like you know caveats uh, but I, I just love this one just all in. So yeah um, I cannot wait to read the third one in the Wayfarers trilogy. I'm just really excited now because this one was just so beautiful and amazing and they're both definitely worth your time and checking out because like if you read a lot of heavy books like I do these are great you know a couple books to step back and just take a break and read a good book but one that isn't quite as emotionally daunting there's still a lot of difficult things that are discussed in these books but you know they're still warm and fuzzy books let's just put it that way so okay so next up is the fifth season and hold on wait for it the obelisk gate now I'm not going to tell you anything about The Obelisk Gate, just know that I adored it, okay? Because, spoilers. So we're going to talk about the fifth season, um, and oh my goodness, guys, like, I've read so many fantasy novels because I love them. Like, anyone who loves fantasy novels usually reads, like, all of them. Like, but you get to a point where you're no lo longer reading A quality novels, you're reading, like, B and C quality novels just because you love the genre. Um, and those are the types that I would recommend to people, like, yeah, 
if you want to read fantasy, you can read these, but they're not really for everyone. This one, I think, is more for everyone. If I were to give a fantasy book to someone who didn't really read high epic fantasy, it would probably be something like this. And that is a, an astounding testament to the brilliance of N.K. Jemisin. So I'm just gonna sit here and gush because this was pretty much a five-star read for me, which is rare. How, how to describe this book? So this is about Esun, who is an origin, and origins are sort of like magicians. They can move the world around and they have a lot of earth-based abilities. But in the world that she lives in, origins are kind of illegal. There's a place called the Fulcrum that takes any origins and they're kind of forced to like serve the Fulcrum, which is like an independent from the government, but the government often uses them in any way. So, but people are really afraid of origins and kind of, uh, they basically mob and try to kill any child who shows ability to do that. So what the Fulcrum does is they send out guardians to go and find the children and bring them back. But uh, you're basically enslaved, though, for the rest of your life. And so Esun does not want to do that, so she found and settled down with a family. She comes home and her husband has killed her son Uche because he found out that both of his children are both also are also origins and um, then he ran off with his um, daughter. So Esun is wanting revenge and is planning on going and finding her husband but then something big happens and the entire like continent splits and the fifth season starts. So what is the fifth season? The fifth season is like the end of the world like vol there's volcanic eruptions, there's ash, and each one is a little different. And the entire like world and culture is based on surviving fifth seasons. They happen every one to two hundred or something years, um, and they last from you know anywhere from a few years to decades, and you just don't know. So a fifth season just started. Her husband killed her son. She's gonna go try to rescue her daughter. That's one viewpoint. We also had the viewpoint of Cyanite, who is a fulcrum origin person, and she gets this particular assignment, um, and we learn more about that. Uh, the third viewpoint is from Demaya, who is a little girl who's discovered by the fulcrum, and she is being taken back to the main fulcrum place to be trained and stuff. So we get those three viewpoints of different origins and it's it's amazing. Like I'm trying to give you the most vague description of what's going on because there's so many spoilers and thankfully the Wikipedia page has nothing about the plot or I totally would have spoiled it for myself but I'm glad I didn't um, because there's this book is amazing. It's just so diverse but also like fresh like for you get to the point where you've read so many books about elves and dwarves and like medieval culture that you get super bored you know but this one they can't have metal because it rusts during fifth seasons so it's strange because they have antibiotics and some like they can reattach limbs and they have a lot of medical advancements but they're still running around in horses and buggies and stuff and so you have like a totally different society. It's different than anything that I've really read before. And but you also have some weird futuristic technology that they keep discovering and stuff and there's just so much going on with this book and I really 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 loved it. Um, that being said, there are trigger warnings for violence against children and also sexual violence against women. Just so you know, like, it is there. And also a lot of fantasy books are really here for the world building and like the story and saving the world and stuff, but they don't have a lot of twists to them, you know? It's pretty, fairly straightforward. Um, and, uh, but this one has a lot of twists in it. Like you, you're like, I did not see that coming. What is this? And they're both like that. Both books, like a lot of times you have fantasy books that the second book is just like, sort of like a repeat of the first one, but that is not. So we learn more about the culture and secondary characters and stuff in this one, but it still has its own twist, its own plot, and ma'am, they start, like, this one picks up, like, literally immediately in the same scene that this one leaves, and I cannot wait to read the third one, because a lot of stuff happened at the end of the second one, and I'm just dying, and the third one comes out in August. Can't even. Just can't even. I don't even know how to stop. I just don't even know how to stop talking about this book. Just go read it. Just please, please go read it. <laughs> okay, so those are the books that I read uh, for the beginning of June. Um, if you've read any of these books, please let me know. If you have thoughts on them, let me know. Uh, I guess I will talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>